That's the only way I can hold the mic so I can do a clap. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Generic White Guy Talks About uh, the Internet and has a lot of thoughts about it for some reason. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this episode. Today we're talking about Twitch. Yeah. And as a generic white guy, I'm also the type of guy that has spent uh, a lot of time on Twitch. Now I don't want to come out of the bag and be like, oh, well, all Twitch is bad and it's just a power hungry company, even though that it's a company and most companies are money hungry and some sort of. S Jesus, sorry. And most companies are power hungry in any way, sort or shape and form. But I am also a person that has quite a lot of experience with Twitch as a person that has uh, streamed myself for two years actually. Now I won't say that I was like amazing or that it went well or it even went at all. But I did manage to get like somewhat of I think like a thousand subscribers. I don't want to check it right now. But I, no not a thousand subscribers but then I would have a lot of money. Uh, no, I got like as somewhat like a thousand followers in like the span of two years, but it also did take quite a lot of work. But with that in the back of your head, that also does mean that I'm a person that have spent a lot of time on Twitch, not only with communities, but also with my own community and uh, also with other streamers. And I kind of have a little bit of an inside scoop, even though that I'm not like 25,000 subscribers and fucking make a big like a lot of the other guys. So today I kind of want to talk a little bit about how Twitch can be uh, a big problem for some people. I don't want to say only negative stuff about Twitch because Twitch does also do a lot of really great things. But to be able to answer this question, how Twitch is feeding into the loneliness epidemic as it currently is, but also just a lot of social media basically is, we need to kind of figure out where the problem lies. Does the problem only lie with Twitch and how they're a money hungry company and blah blah, or does it also lie with the consumer in the way that they're actually using this content and how it's affecting their life, or is it also a part of the streamer and how he engages with this community? So what I want to talk about is kind of like a little bit of everything. Yeah. So that's what we're going. To, that's what we're. Gonna, that is what we're gonna do. So, if you're new to Twitch and you haven't really dabbled that much into it, a big thing about Twitch is how there's community engagement. Let's say that you're a kind of a lonely guy and maybe you have a cool programming job programming for like nine hours every single day and you get home maybe you don't have a fucking wife and children and all that other stuff that would give you some sort of like i don't know happiness in life and therefore you seek out other communities twitch does this really well by that they have the fucking gaming tab a lot of people that uh, don't go out a lot they usually tend to play a lot of games and when you have a gaming tab that also means that you can kind of like find what interests you there's also arts and crafts and fucking I know there used to be porn on there. There probably still is, if I'm gonna be completely honest, but uh, maybe not. I don't use it that much. And that way, people can like kind of find their shared interests. So already there, you have a thing that is connecting you to the platform. Therefore, afterwards, you have to find a person that you really like. And to find that person can be really difficult. And there's also like the lost cause fallacy that sometimes you might find a person and then they become like really huge. And therefore, you don't have that same type of engagement. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Let's go back a little bit. The way that Twitch gets you to stay is not what Twitch actually does. It's what the streamers does. And that can come in many ways, shapes, forms whatever you want it to be. It could be, for example, there's a guy that you think looks really, really cool and therefore you like to look at him. Or it could be a person with some big bahungas and you like to look at them, right? Or it could be Pokemane's editor that uh, didn't make any videos because he couldn't stop cranking the hawk to her, which is, yeah, I'm not gonna comment on that. And unlike a lot of traditional media, Twitch is also interactive. You know, you can say, well, and then the streamer can have a little clip of his live reaction feed on the top where he goes like this. What? And that makes a lot of these parasocial relationships that you can say something and the other person on the side of the screen, it's kind of like you, you right now. If you text me something in the comments, I will see because I have like fucking 300 subscribers, right? So, but if I had a million subscribers, I would not be able to see it. So if somebody said, oh, I'd love it if you said fucking, I don't know, Say bonsai tree four times in your next videos. I could be like, fuck it, that sounds fun. And then I'm just gonna put in a fucking bonsai tree from time to time. 
But Twitch has this direct feedback. Ooh. It's instantaneous. And that's what gives this kind of parasocial relationship. Now, what is a parasocial relationship even? A parasocial relationship refers to a one-sided psychological bond that individuals develop with media personalities, celebrities, or fictional characters. These relationships are characterized by feelings of attachments, intimacy, and even affection, despite the lack of real-life interaction or reciprocation from the person or character being admired. So now that we kind of understand, like, basically what a parasocial relationship is, well, how does it actually work when you come to the big whole fucking cloud of streamers and whatever the fuck is out there, right? Well, there is uh, multiple different factors, and I will go through some of them. Obviously, as I mentioned before, there's the interactive communities and the interactive content, right? The way that Twitch enforces this is by allowing TTS, or text-to-speech. Uh, which is a way that Twitch allows streamers to put in a little thing that says, oh, fucking this guy donated, and this guy's name is fucking PP Poo Poo Man 300, and he says, Find him! Or he could do a helicopter for like fucking eight hours and watch the streamer go like, Ugh! which is in itself not a bad thing, but it can be kind of like feeding into this. Uh, this loop that I'm trying to talk about here. And in that way, when you have some sort of content, it's not like I'm watching a Tom Hanks movie or a Tom Cruise movie, and then I'm like, oh my god, Tom Cruise is looking at the camera and he's talking to me. He's talking to me. No, I understand that uh, even though how much I yell and scream, Tom Cruise will not turn around and be like, wow, that was a really cool comment you came with there, Fisberg. You know, obviously, I can understand that. But as a streamer, I also had, like, I think my biggest stream was, like, I don't know, like, 50 viewers or something like that. And even at that point, I still kind of remembered everyone's names and, like, their age and all that other stuff, which is uh, really cool, and I really enjoyed that. But when you become to a certain level of streaming, there is no fucking way you remember any of the names. And the way I watch stream is that I kind of just do look at things that I think is kind of cool, like speedruns or... Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. That That's about it. And then I just kind of lurk and look at it. Uh, but if you're looking for a community where you can kind of express, uh, like, get some sort of relationship going, you kind of have to stick to the smaller communities. It also... Uh, streaming and streamers and Twitch and all that lingo can also give you some sort of uh, identification. It can tell people that, oh, look at me, I'm writing to this guy and he's answering me. Just little me, look, the guy on the screen is answering me. Um, and that can, for some reason, especially if you have a hard time uh, connecting with other people in real life, it can definitely give you this kind of ego boost. Well, not I wouldn't say ego boost, like, woo, now I'm finally fucking cool, and now I got <coughs> cool sunglasses. <laughs> no, it can give you th this sort of sense of, that I am being heard, I am being seen, this person knows who I am. And I really did enjoy streaming on Twitch, and I will probably also do it again if I get, I don't know, fucking, I don't know, a thousand subscribers, I'll probably start streaming again. But it's very important to know that as a viewer, especially, that you're texting a person. On the other side, you guys know way more about me than I know about you. I will say though, everyone I met during streaming was really fucking fun, and they're all really cool guys. I like them a lot. And girls also like them a lot. Another thing that a lot of streamers tend to do is to tell words of affirmation to their viewers, which in itself is not a bad thing. And I've also, while I was streaming, I also did that because uh, I generally did feel like that. And I also kind of feel it like here when people comment on my video and like it, I also feel like, fuck man, thank you so much, you guys. But especially with, if you're a hot streamer in, in, the, in the streaming world, there's like a, there's like the triangle, another triangle than the one that I talked about before. But this triangle is like a fucking key to success when streaming. And that is either you have to be really good at something or you have to be extremely hot or sexy or cute or something like that. Or you have to be extremely funny. And you need to have uh, two of those, right? Either you have to max out one of them or you have to be really good at two of them. Especially in the uh, second section with the cute and sexy and freak mode, uh, a lot of people... Uh, throw out a lot of words of affirmation. Obviously, their viewership is usually also uh, lonely people. Uh, I don't want to call them outright lonely, but definitely people who might, might feel like they're missing that type of 
it's especially with uh, female connections that people feel like they're missing this type of connection and then they can become like uh, basically money picks for these streamers and they tend to not tend to but sometimes they can definitely uh, pour more money into this uh, streamer because then the streamer says their name and therefore uh, they get this type of affirmation that I'm being seen, I'm being heard and she loves me. Why doesn't she love me? There is this study that says that uh, if you look up to a person and that person is like writing out to all their viewers and stuff like that and saying like, oh my God, I love you guys and all that stuff, then there can definitely be a mismatch in the way that you are being perceived and the way that you feel like this person is perceiving you because the way you're perceiving it is like, oh my God, this person is so amazing and this person loves me and this person is blah, blah, blah. And the way that uh, the streamer slash content creator slash influencers looking at it is like, oh cool, this post got 2000 likes. That's rough, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm just getting some water from all the yapping I'm doing. <sighs> Stay hydrated. And as social media is today, it's all about keeping people in the loop because the more people who are actively watching, the more people you can feed advertisement to, therefore Twitch will make more money. And they have features where you can either uh, raid other people, like you give the, your viewers to another person, which is really cool. I've been raided a couple times, fucking great for it because it boosts communities. But it also inadvertently keeps people in a loop, which is both a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because on one hand, it helps the streamer. And on the other hand, it also makes people not be like, oh, now I watch my content and now I'm done watching my content and now I can go on with my life and do other stuff. Kind of like YouTube keeps like, oh, don't you want to watch this short? And then you want to watch this short? Hey, what about this short? It's actually really cool and you are going to enjoy it very much, right? And then before you know it, you've been looking like this. But yeah, all of these algorithms are kind of made in a way to keep you in the loop, to always never leave the side because the more you donate, the more you watch, the more you get advertised to, the more money the company makes, makes it difficult to break the cycle. Especially if you watch streamers for a long time and if you have a schedule that you're following them in. Like let's say that I stream uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, right? Then I will have the same viewers Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and maybe even some new viewers. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but I'm saying that for some people, it can be an easy escape being like, oh, sorry, no, I can't do this today because I'm actually watching fucking Baba Booey stream tonight because he's fucking playing Apex again or something like that, right? And that can keep people in these really bad habits. So, uh, what did I want to say about this? Hmm, nothing in particular, if I'm going to be completely honest uh i just thought it was something that was pretty fun and interesting um i think it's uh, important to just look out for yourself if you find yourself being in this unproductive loop where you don't feel like you can connect with others and do all this other stuff because you're so addicted to twitch or if you can't stop cranking the hawk to whatever twitch streamer is on right and i just think it's pretty interesting how a community or a service that is made to connect more people to the outer world is inadvertently doing the other thing by isolating people even more because they don't get real connections. And that's kind of dark, but that's life. That's all I had to say. I hope you had a great time watching this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did. On that, I'm gonna fucking, I don't know, go crank the hog or something. Bye. Bruh.